Welcome to the Inside Java Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Chad Arimira, and boy, doesn't that intro music get you in the holiday spirit? The Inside Java Pod is normally 30 minute interviews of folks that work on Java here at Oracle. And yes, we know there's been a huge gap in episodes, but bear with us, 2025 promises a lot of great content. But in addition to those interviews, I'd like to introduce a shorter 15 minute format that covers a variety of topics that Java developers should be interested in. What's coming up in the latest release? What's happening in the community? What are the latest advancements of Java and AI? What's the Java DevRel team up to, et cetera, et cetera. I'll try and do a few of these per month to keep you informed of important and interesting stuff going on. Again, we know you love the interviews. We've got a bunch of those planned as well in 2025. But let me know what you think about this added show format. Love it, hate it, or something in between. Find me at Chad Arimura, A-R-I-M-U-R-A, or at Java on X, or really anybody on the DevRel team, pretty much anywhere social is happening, can take feedback. Just let us know. Okay, thanks. Let's get started with the first episode. We wouldn't be able to do the first episode of this without talking about JDK24. JDK24 is really big. It's got... You know, actually, it turns out that it's got 24 JEPs in it. Uh, that is not by design. Um, it would behoove me not to start by mentioning Java One. Tickets are now on sale. Um, go to javaone.com. It's in three months, March 18th through 20th. We're very, very excited to be holding the first Java One back in the Bay Area independent of any other Oracle event um, since the acquisition of Sun, gosh, what is it? Over 14 years ago. Um, So we're really, really excited for this particular instance of Java One coming up uh, just around the corner in March. Tickets will sell out. So do take advantage of the early bird pricing to get the the low pricing and join us in March. Uh, We will will be launching Java 24 live from Java One. And so you too can be a part of the live stream that takes place uh, on day one of the conference on March 18th. So with that said, let's get back to Java 24. By now, everyone should know about the six month release cadence. You should probably know by now that we've been talking about it now for over seven years and we've been releasing new versions of Java like Clockwork in March and September. It is probably the best thing that's happened to Java in a very, very long time. I'd like to say it's really created a renaissance in Java. The innovation pipeline is stronger than it's ever been. And this release really, really shows that with the largest number of JDK enhancement proposals, um, 24 JEPs in this release. And uh, as I said earlier, that wasn't planned. Planning that would have required a lot of things. So for starters, we would have had to know in advance what would be ready and what wouldn't. Um, Or we would have had to hold things back or rush things to get them in. Both of these things are very, very bad. You know, we we don't, it's really hard to estimate software um, and to know when things are going to be ready. And it's really, really bad to rush things because if we rush things, um, then it may degrade the quality of each release. And every single release of Java now is production quality, high quality, ready to go, ready to be used in production. That's why it's really important that we only put into each release what's ready and what's not ready just waits for the next train to come out. And that's a short six months away for the next train release. So um, this has been an excellent system. Okay, let's talk about preview features. Since like all releases in JDK24, there are a bunch of features in preview. So what does this mean? In short, a preview feature is one whose design, specification, and implementation are complete, yet they're still impermanent and would benefit from a period of broad exposure and evaluation before becoming permanent. So what does complete mean? Well, this means that the preview features do meet two criteria. It's ready, meaning it has a high probability of being finished within 12 months, and it's stable, meaning it could really credibly achieve permanent status without any further changes. To learn more about this, check out JEP12, which has a ton of information, and I encourage you to read it. Incubating features, on the other hand, are features that are not sufficiently proven, but they're still interested in getting them out into the hands of developers while the feature progresses towards finalization or removal. You'll find incubator incubator features namespaced with jdk.incubator. So for example, API package names or module names. Experimental features are similar to incubating features, but they're specific to Hotspot and they're early versions, not ready for it to be final uh, that we think, and they're low level that need to be explicitly unlocked inside of Hotspot to run. 
Again, really the gold standard for information here is RJAPS 11 and 12, where this is all covered in painstaking detail. So do check those out. I'll put them in the show notes. We also have a great article on dev.java about preview incubator and experimental features. Just go to dev.java and search for the word preview and you'll find the article right away. Okay, let's go back to JDK 24. I'm gonna just rattle off a couple of the JEPs. I can't do it all on this short format. So what I'll probably do is split this up into a couple of episodes. Um, but let's let's go th down the list a little bit and, and talk about some of these. Let's see, 472, prepare to restrict the use of JNI. What this is, is it will be throwing warnings now about the uses of the Java native interface, but also parts of the FFM API. Why the FFM API? Isn't that supposed to be the replacement for JNI? The answer is yes, but also FFM API. So anything that interacts with native code um, and interacts with foreign code does have some inherent risk to it um, because you know it's foreign. It's not running on the JVM. So if you read the JEP, you'll notice that the authors identify four primary risk areas. Two of those also apply to the FFM API. And so there will be parts of the API classified as restricted. And in order to use those, um, they must be approved for use to ensure integrity by default. So preparing to restrict this usage with JEP 472 is throwing warnings. And in the future, uh, it will fail unless you explicitly give it uh, permission to use or, or essentially authorize it. Okay, let's let's go on to 483, ahead of time class loading and linking. Um, this is the first work being delivered into the mainline JDK by Project Leiden. Uh, this is very exciting. Remember, the goal of Project Leiden was to reduce both startup time and time to peak performance while determining the level of trade-off you're willing to make along the way. So maybe you don't make any trade-off and you just automatically get better time to peak performance in startup. Um, or maybe you want to make some explicit trade-offs in order to get there. That's what Leiden is all about. So JEP 483 starts us off by allowing the Hotspot JVM to store classes after reading and parsing, but also loading and linking them. This is a natural evolution of what um, was class data sharing or CDS, which has been around for a very long time. Um, but now this basically takes ahead of time parsing, reading, and loads and links them as well. So this is just the beginning of Project Leiden. The, the results that we've seen so far are very, very promising. And I would expect a lot more to come out of Project Leiden in the near future. Moving on, how about 485, Stream Gatherers? So Stream Gatherers adds a gatherer API to streams, which adds effectively three elements, a gatherer interface, a gather method on the interface, and a factory class called gatherers with pre-made gatherers. Um, and so this effectively makes it so that we have a terminal operation. Um, similar to the way we have a terminal operation, we have custom intermediate operations for uh, for pipelines and stream pipelines. So stream gatherers are are very exciting addition to streams, which are in, in and of themselves very exciting feature of Java. Um, so definitely take a look at gatherers when you get a chance. Um, let's see, so for 86, yes, permanently disable the security manager. This is worth talking about. So as a reminder, the security manager has been around for a very, very, very long time. Um, and it was a great idea at one point, but its usage nowadays is exceedingly rare. However, the maintenance burden of having and carrying around the, the security manager across thousands of classes inside the JDK itself is very, very high. And it slows down the development and the evolution of the platform. Now, how does this affect you? Well, it affects you because most of you aren't using the security manager, but it affects you because it makes it so that, you know, it, the overhead of the burden of maintaining the platform makes it so that it slows down the evolution. And so, you know, things that you want to get in your hands, like, I don't know, do you want to get more Panama? Do you want to get more, you want to get Valhalla in your hands? Um, getting those things faster means reducing the maintenance burden um, of, of the platform itself. And in fact, that will increase the security of the platform as well, because it's reducing a lot of um, a lot of the surface area of, of the code inside the JDK. So um, with JDK 17, we've been warning about its dep deprecation ever since then. And so the time has come for the next step in the process, which is to revise the spec so that developers cannot enable it and other platform classes do not refer to it. Um, so now trying to enable the security manager will, will throw an error, um, starting with JDK 24. 491, synchronize virtual threads without pinning. 
just as a quick reminder, Virtual Threads introduced a new lightweight threading model uh, that make it very, very easy to build, maintain, and observe highly concurrent um, and high throughput applications using Java without resorting to asynchronous or reactive programming. Virtual Threads was introduced in Java 21, um, but there was one particular you know, use case where pinning became uh, quite frustrating, and that was around the usage of synchronized blocks, so thread pinning inside synchronous blocks. JEP 491 removes that, which is the biggest source of scalability issues for virtual threads. Um, and I think this removes one of the biggest barriers to widespread adoption. I mean, uh, virtual threads is already one of the most highly anticipated features in the JDK in a very long time. Um, and hopefully you might not even notice it if you're building applications because a lot of the libraries and frameworks that you're using already take advantage of virtual threads. Uh, but there are edge cases that we're pinning and 491 takes care of one of the major ones. Um, so that's a very exciting advancement of virtual threads. Okay, let's talk about JEP 494 module import declarations. Now these are pretty neat. Um, this allows developers to more concisely import everything they need without getting uh, into granular imports. Um, the format is import module module name, and that basically imports the entire public API of that module. In other words, all of the package, packages that the module exports. Um, this does work very nicely and lead me to JEP 495, which is the fourth preview of simple source files and instance main methods. Uh, this is part, you know, this all of this work is part of something called paving the on-ramp. It's a group of work aimed at offering a smooth on-ramp to the Java programming language. And it aims to, as the name says, introduce concepts gradually so that you can on-ramp onto the language without unlearning things later. And this is really, really cool, um, especially 495 simple source files instance main, which basically reduces the smallest Java program down to basically void main uh, bracket print line hello world close bracket. No more public class hello world public static void main string args, even though it, it you know kind of rolls off the tongue at this point. I think this is something that is, you know, really battling the perception um, of Java that it's verbose uh, and makes it much more succinct. And it's something that not like every developer can use. If you're writing glue code, demos, tooling, small programs, you can use this. Um, and that perception of Java for the next generation of developers is critically important. Yeah, and this work is is really important not just for you know reducing the language by you know reducing your program by a couple of words, but really battling that perception that Java is verbose and making it much easier and giving um, educators the option to really go down different paths for for teaching Java. And I think that's really really important to get the next generation of developers on board. Okay, I think that's enough for this episode. I've covered maybe a quarter of the JEPs in uh, the release of JDK 24. And don't forget, even behind those 24 JEPs are thousands of stability, performance, bugs, um, and fixes inside the JDK. Uh, you just don't see them as, as part of a JEP, but there's a lot of work that goes into each release, and 24 is no exception. In fact, 24 is an exception in that it's one of the largest releases yet. So thank you for listening to the headline. Just a couple of uh, news roundups quickly. There's a new article using the foreign function and memory API. We talked about that briefly in this episode. There's a six part uh, tutorial series that was done by my team. Um, Ana Maria Mialciano uh, just committed that, I think, to the dev.java site. Um, so if you just go to dev.java and you search for FFM, you should be able to find that tutorial series. It's a six part series. It's really, really great. We've also posted Brian Getz's epic refactor of Java to, um, from his DevOps Belgium talk onto our YouTube channel. So check out youtube.com slash Java. There's also new episodes of the Duke's Corner podcast, the most recent ones being with Ted M. Young and Donald Robb. So go to dev.java slash Duke slash Corner or find it anywhere that podcasts are distributed. I think that's pretty much it for now. I'll hopefully be doing more of these short episodes and uh, to keep you informed of all of the things that are going on with my team, the DevRel team here at Oracle or the Java platform group more broadly, or you know things that you should know coming down the pike to be an expert Java developer, we'll hopefully be doing more of these episodes in the future. So with that, I will be signing out um, and you won't hear from us again, probably for the rest of December as we go into the holiday season, but we'll catch up with you in January. Again, check out javaone.com. Uh, early registration is open. The event will sell out. So do take advantage of early reg while you can. Thank you very much and have a great holiday. Mm -hmm.